Okay, let's go through the contents of this video. Uh, first, I will explain what is image fusion. Then I will explain the different types of image fusion methods. And then I will explain that how we can achieve the image restoration, mixing and morphing using image fusion. And then I will explain the proposed discrete wavelet transform based uh, fusion algorithm followed by the MATLAB code for fusion of color images. So let's go ahead. But before going ahead, I request you to watch uh, following my two uh, previous videos. Uh, the first one uh, is about the wavelet transform analysis of images using MATLAB and Simulink. So this video you can find on this link which is given in the description. And the second video is also about the same thing but uh, the implementation is using Python. So its link is also given in the description. Actually, uh, these uh, two videos will be helpful uh, to understand the current videos because when you go through this uh, uh, video, you will be able to uh, learn that how uh, an image can be decomposed into uh, the various uh, wavelet coefficients uh, uh, such as uh, approximation coefficients and detail coefficients using MATLAB or Python. Okay, now let's see uh, what is image fusion. Actually, the image fusion is defined as a process of collecting all the important information from multiple images and combining them to result in a single one. And the single output image is more informative and accurate than any of the single source image and it consists of all the necessary information. The purpose of image fusion is not only to reduce the amount of data but also to construct images that are more appropriate and understandable for the human and machine perception. With the image fusion, we can restore the degraded images. We can mix many images to create a single one and we can achieve uh, the face morphing also. I will show you all these examples uh, in this current video. Now let us see uh, the different methods of uh, image fusion. Uh, we have actually the two approaches. One is the spatial domain and second is the frequency domain. In a spatial domain, uh, we have the high pass filtering method and second is the intensity hue saturation method. Third is the Brovery method and uh, fourth is the principal component analysis based method. There are many other methods also related to the spatial domain. Similarly, we have the frequency domain approaches where uh, we can find the pyramid based approaches uh, utilizing the Laplacian and Gaussian. And then we have the discrete cosine transform based approach and then we have the discrete wavelet transform based approach and we use curvelets also for MS fusion and there are other methods also and for this current video I'm going to discuss only this uh, discrete wavelet transform based approach. So let us see that what we can achieve with uh, MS fusion. The very first thing is that we can restore an image uh, from the degraded images. So uh, here uh, is an example uh, you can see that we have the two images, image one and image two, both are degraded. So you can see this blurry area uh, left side to the image one and the similar uh, blurry area uh, which is the right side bottom right to this image two. So when they are fused together, uh, we can achieve the restored image which is free from uh, these uh, blurry defect you can see uh, but the condition is that uh, uh, this uh, uh, the degradation must be uh, uncommon areas so for example if this uh, uh, is a1 I mean the degradation area is a1 and this is a2 then we must have a1 intersection a2 equal to 0 that means there should not be any common part if there is a common part of the degradation then it will be difficult to uh, restore image uh, using this image fusion technique then we uh, we have to go for some other approaches we have another example of image restoration uh, consider these two images of spider-man image one and image two uh, both are uh, degraded by this uh, black color uh, brush stroke so uh, we can uh, uh, fuse them together to create this uh, uh, image which is free from both the strokes and you can see that these two strokes are not common uh, uh, area wise uh, in these two degraded images and other uh, important uh, application is image mixing 
uh, where the two or more different images can be fused together to create a new one which carries of course the more information so we have uh, one example where you can see uh, that uh, uh, we have one image uh, of beach and uh, we have another image of uh, sea beach so here you can see that they are uh, different each other and when they are fused together uh, we get a third image which is uh, uh, different from these two of course and uh, uh, this third one is carrying all the objects of image 1 and image 2 you can see so the trees of uh, uh, left side trees of image 1 are uh, also now visible in this output image and this uh, left side objects are also visible in this uh, output image so you can create uh, a new a entirely new image by mixing uh, two or more than two images in the next uh, example uh, you can see uh, that uh, we can fuse together more than two images for example uh, here we have total five images uh, each carrying uh, the action sequence of a uh, runner uh, here uh, uh, the, this runner is actually uh, jumping from one point to another point and you can uh, imagine that these uh, uh, frames are captured by some cameras at uh, uh, at certain uh, interval of time so we are getting this uh, actually uh, the discrete sequence and if you want to uh, want to uh, have all the sequences in a single frame then you can achieve this so when all the five images are fused together uh, you can achieve this type of beautiful uh, output image where all the sequence of this uh, 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 action i mean the jumping action are combined together uh, in a single image and the next uh, important uh, application uh, uh, is image uh, face morphing. So actually we can uh, do the face morphing uh, uh, for the two different persons and we can create a different uh, face image. So here we can take one example. So we have two face images, image one and image two. When they are fused together, we get a third face. Uh, which is of course uh, different from this image 1 and image 2 but carrying the information uh, from both the images. So here you can see that uh, this is the morphed image of both the faces and similarly uh, we can uh, try this face morphing on uh, some uh, real uh, face images. So for uh, this uh, uh, let's take this example uh, where we have the faces of two celebrities Ashwara Rai and Jennifer Lawrence. When these are uh, fused together, uh, we get uh, a new uh, beautiful face uh, as an output morph image. So here you can see uh, in the output image, uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, beauties from uh, both the images uh, in a single uh, image. So we can achieve these types of uh, uh, applications uh, using uh, image fusion. And I will show all these uh, using uh, my MATLAB code. Now let us uh, go through uh, the image fusion uh, technique that how we can achieve all these things using a discrete wavelet transform. So what is the approach actually? So this is the approach. Here you can see that we have the two images, image 1 and image 2. Uh, both are decomposed into the wavelet coefficients uh, uh, using a discrete wavelet transform. Here I have shown only a single level discrete wavelet decomposition. So uh, after decomposition of image 1, we get the four matrices of coefficient. So uh, you can see that this is the matrix 1, uh, which is uh, of course representing your approximation coefficients of image 1. And this matrix uh, is representing uh, the horizontal detailed coefficient of uh, image 1. This is representing the vertical coefficients and this matrix is uh, representing all the detailed uh, diagonal coefficients, sorry CD1. And similarly for a second image, uh, this is your approximation coefficient matrix that is CA2 and this is your CH2 and this is CV2 and this is uh, CD2. Uh, actually one I'm using uh, to represent the image one and two I'm using to represent uh, the image two. These are not representation of the labels. So after decomposition we fuse uh, all these uh, uh, wavelet coefficients to uh, achieve this uh, uh, fused uh, coefficient uh, matrices 
I mean uh, I get uh, C A, uh, C H, C V and C D. And after this uh, uh, by taking inverse discrete wavelet transform uh, we get the output image. Now question is that how this uh, uh, fusion is uh, uh, obtained of these uh, coefficients. So we do the fusion uh, actually uh, the similar subband uh, fusion. For example, in this equation first you can see that fusion is done uh, for approximation coefficients of uh, first image, I mean CA1 with the approximation coefficients of uh, second image. So, uh, so approximation coefficients are fused together. Similarly, the horizontal is fused uh, with the horizontal coefficients of second image and vertical uh, coefficients of image 1 uh, are fused together with the vertical coefficients of image 2. Similarly, diagonal uh, diagonals are fused with the diagonal. So, you can see uh, in these equations. Now, what is this uh, actually the fusion 1 and fusion 2? Actually, these are uh, the mathematical operation which is done on these uh, two uh, matrices CA1 and CA2, CH1, CH2, etc. So, what are these mathematical operations? Actually, you will see in the next slide. So, this fusion 1 is a mathematical operation which is done on the approximation coefficient and fusion 2 uh, is mathematical operation which is done on uh, detail coefficients. So, uh, this uh, mathematical operation fusion 1 can be a very simple mathematical operation such as finding mean, max or minimum. Uh, similarly, uh, the fusion 2 can also be the same mean, max and minimum. So, it means uh, uh, for example, as I wrote that C A is obtained by fusion uh, 1, fusion 1 of C A 1 comma C A 2. It means uh, it is equivalent to uh, I mean uh, finding mean of uh, these two uh, coefficient matrices I mean C A 1 comma uh, C A 2. So, this is a mathematical operation, it can be uh, your max operation, it can be your min operation also. And there are other mathematical operations also possible, so you can use them. And uh, since we have total 3 different operations under fusion 1 and 3 different operations under fusion 2, so total we have the 9 combinations of these mathematical operations, which will be applied on approximations and detailed wavelet coefficients. So, therefore, these are 9 combinations, I mean the mean mean, mean max, mean min, max mean, max max, max min, min mean, min max and min min. So, what does it mean actually? If you, we take the first one, it means the first term is representing the operation uh, on approximation coefficients, I mean the CAs and the second term is representing the operations on uh, detail coefficients and detail coefficients is the combinations of uh, C H, C V and C D. Similarly, if you take uh, this uh, uh, min min, it means the min operation is done on approximation coefficients and min operation is done on detail coefficients. So, here is a table where you can easily understand uh, these all uh, combinations are written here. The first one is the mean mean. I mean the mean mean, so mean is done on approximation coefficients and mean is also done on the detail coefficients. And in second one, the mean is done on approximation and max operation is done on detail coefficients. So, similarly, we have all uh, uh, 9 combinations. So, we can uh, do these operations on our wavelet coefficients. Okay. So, I will show you these uh, operations on uh, uh, different examples. And each operation has actually uh, its own uh, importance. So, to achieve a particular goal such as image mixing, phase morphing or uh, uh, restoration of image from the degraded etc. We have to choose an appropriate uh, 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 operation or combination to achieve our objective. So, now let us uh, go for the MATLAB code. So, this is the MATLAB code. Uh, first, uh, we define uh, the fusion type. For example, uh, here uh, the mean max is given. Uh, you can change this string. As I said, you can use the max max, you can use mean max or something else. Uh, any one out of those nine. And then you can choose the type of wavelet. For example, the coiflet 5 
is used for decomposition here you can use any wavelet and with these lines of code when executed with the ui get file a system dialog box will appear that will ask you to choose your first image when you choose your first image that will go inside this variable img1 and with these lines of code uh, the same thing happens uh, you select the second image and that will go to the variable uh, img2 and uh, after that uh, we get the size information of uh, the first image so we uh, get the rows and column uh, dimension of the first image and here we are uh, actually uh, making the second image uh, equal to the first image because it's a condition uh, for the uh, image fusion that both images must be of the same size if the second image is not of the same size to the first then uh, we are just resizing it, uh, uh, e making equal to the first image in terms of rows and columns. So once both images are equal in the size, then uh, uh, we go for image fusion. Uh, here we are using uh, actually the color images. So uh, because of the color images, uh, we have to uh, do the operations three times because each color image has R frame, uh, G frame and then blue frame. So we will uh, fuse, uh, so we will do the fusion operation for uh, three times. So here you can see that this is the first fusion operation for uh, uh, red frame. This is the fusion operation for green frame and this is the fusion operation from blue frame. So this is actually the output uh, fused uh, images. Uh, and when we get all these uh, three frames RGB after fusion, we uh, simply combine them to get a final fused image. Okay, and this uh, final fused image uh, is uh, also written in the current directory uh, by the name fusedimage.jpg. So later you can uh, use that file. And uh, how this uh, fusion is actually uh, obtained, uh, we have to pass uh, the red frame of image one and the red frame of image 2 we have to uh, give the information of the fusion type that means you are using max 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 we know something else and the wavelet used for the decomposition so when it goes to this function img fusion uh, we get this uh, fused output okay so same function is called for all the three rgb frames and uh, after that we get the output image uh, all the images are plotted here so this is the image one which is plotted similarly image two is plotted and this is the output image which is plotted so this is our actually the main function and here uh, this uh, function uh, image fusion it is not a matlab function it is our function which we have written here uh, to uh, do the image fusion so let us go what is inside this image fusion function. So this is the body of image fusion function. And here, uh, as I said, we pass following parameters. I mean the uh, image one, image two, and uh, the string which is carrying the fusion type, and then uh, type of wavelet uh, which we will use for decomposition. So when we get image one and image two, the first operation of course is to decompose them uh, into the wavelet coefficient. So DWT2 function is actually doing that wavelet decomposition of image 1 and image 2 uh, with a defined wavelet type. So we get the CA1, CH1, I mean approximation coefficients, horizontal detail coefficients, vertical coefficients and diagonal coefficients of image 1. Similarly for image 2 we get these uh, similar four coefficient matrices. And PER here actually uh, is for pe periodic extension of the image at the boundary. So it is used uh, to treat the boundary problem. So it is actually the signal extension mode. So this all I have actually uh, explained in my previous videos. That's why uh, I was uh, recommending to watch those uh, previous videos. So and now we are taking the uh, size information of any one of this matrix because uh, uh, since both the images are of same type, so all these eight matrices will have the same size. So you can take size from any one of the matrix and then initializing uh, the output 
uh, coefficient matrix i mean ca ch cv and cd so ca will be formed after uh, fusing ca1 and ca2 ch will be formed after fusing ch1 and ch2 cb of course from cv1 and cv2 and cd will be from cd1 and cd2 here i have used actually the switch case uh, uh, structure you can go for if else if also no problem so here uh, i am taking decision on the basis of uh, uh, this uh, fusion type so switch fusion type case first if it is mean mean so if i am uh, passing this mean mean operation it means uh, the mean operation is done for approximation coefficient and mean operation is also done for all detail coefficients so you can see the mean operation is done for horizontal coefficients for vertical coefficients and for detail coefficients so two for loops are here to uh, cover the image i mean row wise and column wise similarly uh, if case is uh, mean max so you can uh, see that mean operation is done for approximation coefficient ca1 and ca2 and the max operation is done for all the detail coefficients so this code is just repetitive considering all those nine cases of mean max mean min uh, similarly uh, the max mean and max max so nothing new no new uh, code it is just repetition so max min uh, min mean and finally the min max and the last ninth one is the min min so you can see that min operation is done on uh, approximation coefficients and similarly the min operation is done on all detail coefficients and finally uh, when uh, we get the fuse matrices uh, of ca ch cv and cd so with these fuse matrices ca ch cv and cd uh, we take inverse discrete wavelet transform with the specified wavelet and the signal extension mode then we get the output image so we uh, get this output image after the fusion so which is written as a function output so now let us go to the matlab and see uh, how this program runs and how we can achieve uh, the output so i am going to the matlab so let me go to the editor so this program i have already written and i will just execute this program so you can see this program and here uh, you can see that uh, the fusion type i have already taken the max max you can change anything as per your requirement and uh, as i said this uh, function img fusion uh, we have written and this was the syntax as we have just uh, seen in the slides so for all nine cases are considered here okay so let me run this program so first i am taking the case of the image restoration so i am just running this and it is asking asking me to choose the first image so i am taking this uh, image of kathy one the first image and then I'm taking the second image cathode 2 and let's see what output I will achieve so with this max max operation I achieved this output so here you can see that uh, this degraded image 1 and this image 2 both are degraded and after fusion I get this uh, uh, restored image which has no uh, degradation so this is uh, the approach by which you can achieve a uh, restored image so we can uh, see another example also so let me run this and i can show you that spider-man 1 uh, example so here i am taking the spider-man 1 and then taking the second image spider-man 2 and this is the output you can see so here the image 1 and this is the image 2 and here you can see that all the breast strokes are completely removed using this image fusion technique so i'm getting a very beautiful output uh, in this case so let me take another example so let me close it run it again and i'm taking another example of uh, azure array let's me uh, this image c1 let me choose it and then second image c2 and then let's see what output i will get okay i got this output so here unfortunately i could not uh, remove these uh, brush strokes 
uh, of course uh, why actually it happened it happened because uh, the approach I choose max max so max max approach means uh, I chose the maximum uh, I mean the larger wavelet coefficients in both the images so since uh, these brush strokes are of the lighter colors I mean they are near to white so white actually are represented as one in the image or 250 in the unsigned integer rate they are represented as the larger number I mean the 255 so they are uh, they are producing the larger wavelet coefficient so since I am choosing the max max it means I am choosing the wavelet coefficients representing these brush strokes so obviously they will not go in the output so I have to change my approach so instead of max max I have to choose actually the min min so if I choose min min then let me see what output I will achieve. So let me run this program, select C1, open, select C2, open and let's see what output. Okay, this is the output you can see. Now both the brush strokes are removed. So according to the type of uh, case which you, which you have, you have to change your approach. So max max will not work for all uh, types of uh, degradation. Actually, max max will work for uh, the darker uh, side of uh, uh, degradation and the min min will work for the lighter side degradation. So that you have to keep in the mind. So now let's go uh, for uh, image mixing. So in the image mixing case, I have shown you uh, the cases of the two images of uh, sea beach. So let me uh, go to the sea beach and uh, I am changing this uh, fusion type to min max. So I am taking this min max and let me choose those uh, C beaches files. So this is my uh, first image and this is my second image beach too. So let me see what output I will achieve. So this is my output and you can clearly see that all the objects of image 1 and all the objects of image 2 are now fused together to create this uh, entirely new image. So that is the case of image mixing. Here we are not uh, restoring any image uh, because of the degradation. Actually we have both the images, image 1 and image 2. Both are clear pictures and we are just mixing to create it another third image. So let me take another example. And uh, again I am changing my approach, fusion type. I am changing now uh, min min. And I will show you that example of uh, that uh, jumping sequence, combining the, that jumping sequence of that uh, person. So let me choose those uh, five images. These are images. You can see the U1, U2, U3, U4 and U5. Each carries a single uh, snapshot of uh, the jumping sequence. So let me first select U1 and then select U2. So let's see what output I will achieve. Okay. So I get this output. So both the images are now fused together and uh, I get that these two uh, sequences of jumping. So what I will do now to get a third uh, fusion, I will run this program again. So here you can see that this is the output image, fused image where uh, I got the two uh, uh, sequence, two sequences from U1 and U2 image. So I will take this output image open and uh, then I will take the third image and let's see what output I will achieve. So again you can see that I get this output where uh, the previous two and the third one are fused together. So now I will, I will take the fourth one. So run the program and then take this output as one image and take the uh, fourth image as second image and this is the output which you will get so here the four sequences are uh, combined together and now let me run once again to get the fifth one so let me run this program use this output as first image and take the last image as a second image and this is the output which i achieve so here we can see that by fusing all the five images I get this type of output images where in a single image I am getting all the five jumping sequences. So that is a beautiful creation. Okay, now let me go to the face morphing examples. 
So here uh, I will again uh, change my uh, fusion type. So instead of min min, now I will take mean uh, mean max uh, approach. So by taking mean max approach and let me run this program. So first I will show you this one. So I am selecting this phase uh, one and then phase two. So let me see what type of output I will achieve. Okay. So this is the output you can see. Uh, these two faces are fused together to get this morph image. So this is uh, carrying the features of these two. Okay, uh, now we can uh, try uh, this uh, face morphing on uh, real face images. So let me run this program. Uh, and for this purpose, I choose uh, two celebrity faces, uh, which I have already shown you. Uh, the first is uh, Azure Array. So let's say this is image one. And then choosing this uh, image of uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, so this is image two. So let's see what output I get. Okay. So this is the output which I get as a fused morph image. So you can see uh, that the features of both the images are combined together uh, to create this uh, uh, beautiful uh, face image. And uh, I can take one more example uh, for uh, this face morphing. So let me run this program again. And now I'm taking uh, Angelina Jolie as image one and then uh, uh, Florence Colgate as uh, image 2 and let's see what output I will get. Yeah, this is the output uh, where the image 1 of Angelina is uh, fused with uh, image 2 of uh, Florence Colgate and uh, we get this uh, output image, a uh, morph image uh, which carries the features of these two. So uh, this is how uh, the image morphing is uh, achieved uh, using this image fusion. So here uh, you have seen the cases of uh, uh, restoration of uh, images from uh, uh, degraded images. Uh, here you have seen that how we can mix two images uh, to create a third one which is, uh, which is carrying the information of all the images. And uh, here you have seen that how you can create the morph uh, faces. So that's it for this uh, image fusion video. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed it and uh, I really, really thank you all for watching this video. Uh, please like it, share it. Goodbye.